and welcome back to Bengal Bites, a podcast for real, raw, unfiltered talk about the Cincinnati Bengals and the NFL. I'm your host, Derek. This is episode 12. This is the week four preview, Cincinnati Bengals at the Tennessee Titans. As always, this show is not sponsored by anyone or anything. If you want to know more about the show and you're brand new, go back and check out episode zero, where I explain who I am, what the show is all about. But basically, I'm a hardcore football fan, podcast junkie, and I wanted to make a podcast about the Bengals without any ads, without any BS in it. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure to subscribe, share it with your friends, give me a rating, all that stuff so we can help grow the community. In this episode, we're going to do a preview for the game against the Tennessee Titans. Both of these teams are one and two going into this game. So they're both trying to find their footing, trying to find their place. What kind of a team are they? Are they a good team? Are they a bad team? Are they a contender? And if they are going to be a contender, what is the path for each of these teams forward? So this is going to be an interesting game because the Bengals' first game of the season, they lost miserably in Cleveland to the Browns. The Titans' previous game, week three, they got blown up by the Browns. Very similar scores, almost the same score. So it's like, well, if you take the Browns as the litmus test, these two teams should be somewhat even. And in fact, the Bengals are actually favored to win this game, even though they're on the road. They're playing in Tennessee, but the Bengals are favored by two and a half points. So this should be a pretty winnable game for the Bengals. As we know, Joe Burrow is continuing to deal with his right calf strain injury that he's been working through all through training camp and even through the beginning parts of this season. He said that week three Monday Night Football game did not cause him any new setbacks, new injuries, even though we saw him a couple times kind of grimacing and walking slowly and not really looking like 100% on quite a few plays out there. He wasn't running around being his slippery Joe Burrow normal self. So he said in the conference, in the press conference this week that he didn't have any setbacks and that every week that he doesn't have any setbacks, it's going to continue to get stronger and stronger, better and better. So, uh, you know, we're just going to have to trust the doctors and the physical therapists on the Bengals training staff that they know what they're doing, that they have some kind of a plan to get him rehabilitated throughout the season while he's playing football games every week. And we're just going to hope for the best, I guess. You know, there's really nothing else we can do. If I were in Joe Burrow's shoes, I don't know if I would be able to play through that much pain. But, you know, it's his body. It's his, his career. He can do what he wants with it. I'm surprised that he's kind of just treating it like a live every day like it's your last. Nothing's guaranteed. So, you know, on the one hand, you could say he should sit out because this might hurt his future seasons like next year or the year beyond that but on the other hand you know nothing is guaranteed so Joe Burrow might be saying I might not have another season after this so if I have the opportunity I want to play is if I can even walk out there he's going to go out there and play basically that's a crazy mindset but that's why he's a professional NFL quarterback and I'm not among other reasons <laughs> probably also because I'm not 6'4". But apparently this is going to be what we're just going to have to get used to. And it's never really going to go away and it's never going to be out of our collective minds as fans. We're always going to be on edge. Every time Joe Burrow has to run or scramble or takes a hit, we're going to wonder, oh God, is Joe Burrow okay? And it, we, you know, it's going to be a tightrope all season. It's going to be anxiety inducing, but that's just part of the fun, I guess. For the Bengals, one of the other big stories is T. Higgins is from Tennessee. So every time T. plays in Tennessee back in the Nissan Stadium, his name is up in the rafters of Nissan Stadium because he was the Mr. Football in Tennessee two years in a row. So T. Higgins has a lot of pride, a lot of history and background in the stadium in this state. So he wants to have a good performance, better than he had last game, definitely. But just because this is a home kind of a somewhat of a homecoming for a T. I'm sure he's going to have a lot of family there, so he's going to want to put on a good show for the Tennessee fans. And this is going to be the first time that T's wearing his old number. He used to be number 85 on the Bengals, but he used to be number 5 when he was in high school, and now he's number 5 on the Bengals again. He changed his number. Everybody's switching to single digits, and actually going to the game, I'll admit, it's a lot easier to identify 
players with single digit numbers as opposed to if you got like 85 and 83 it's a lot harder to tell who's who even though like they're physically they're you know Tyler Boyd and T Higgins are a lot different like when you have those double digit numbers it's harder to distinguish them as opposed to single digit numbers so I kind of understand why a lot of players are choosing to do that on the Titans anytime you play Tennessee Derrick Henry their running back stud running back is going to be the focus of the defense and shutting him down has been something that the Bengals have focused on. I think they held him to under 40 yards last year. Against the Browns last week, Derrick Henry only had 20 yards total. So he has definitely been held in check this season. It's going to be something the Titans are going to look to get back on track, especially because they've got some injuries in their wide receiving core, but also on their offensive line that may make it tough for them to pass. So they may want to rely on Derrick Henry, and we'll have to see what their quarterback Ryan Tanhill does. If you look at the Titans' salary cap numbers, Ryan Tanhill and Derrick Henry take up a huge chunk at the top of their salary cap. Ryan Tanhill takes up like 15% of the salary of the Titans. Titans also have a lot of dead money or money that's being spent on players who aren't on the team anymore. So like Bud Dupree and Julio Jones and a few other guys, they're paying they're counting against the Titans salary cap this year. So the Titans are only like spending about $175 million on players who are actually on the team. And another $40 million is going against them for players who aren't on the team. So from a salary cap perspective, the Bengals have the advantage because they are able to spend this. Bengals don't have very much dead cap money at all. They've only got like three or four million dollars. Most of that's from cutting a little L. Collins. So Bengals barely have any. That means the Bengals are spending all their money on players who are actually playing this year on the team as opposed to people who are on other teams, which is great for the Bengals. You know, financially, you want to spend the money on players who are going to help you. So players to watch on the Titans, Ryan Tanhill, the quarterback, number 17, Derek Henry, the running back, number 22. They also got DeAndre Hopkins, New Hopkins, number 10, so he's going to be a player to watch, especially because Traylon Burks is going to be out at this game. We'll get to that in the injuries section. Defensively, the two studs for the Titans are Jeffrey Simmons, their defensive tackle, number 98, and Kevin Bayard, the safety, number 31. Those are probably the two best players they have on defense, but their defensive line is strong. As we know, two years ago, the Bengals played the Titans in the playoffs, and the Titans sacked Joe Burrow nine times. So somehow the Bengals still won the game, but they set a record for most sacks, but still winning the game. So it's kind of a weird record. So we know that the Titans' defensive line can get after Joe Burrow, especially because he's going to have limited mobility. You know the Titans are going to be licking their chops, thinking they're going to get some sacks. So we'll have to see if the offensive line can keep Joe Burrow clean. But just to set the stage a little bit, a little bit of context, Zach Taylor, Bengals head coach, is 3-0 and against Mike Vrabel, the Titans head coach. So even though Zach Taylor has not had a ton of success, in his, especially in his early days, for some reason, he seems to have the Titans number. So I'm sure Mike Vrabel is going to have the Titans up and ready to go. Both, Like I said, both these teams are 1-2, still in it, they're not totally demoralized yet. The last time these two teams met was last year in the regular season in Nashville. The Bengals won the game. It was kind of a, a tough physical game. And at the end of the game, Jeffrey Simmons and Ted Karras and some of the offensive linemen and defensive linemen for the Titans got into it. And Ted Karras ended up getting punched in the face by Jeffrey Simmons and then he was yelling a bunch of stuff at the Titans players, and then he got caught. Ted Karras got filmed leaving the stage, screaming at the Tennessee fans, like, up yours, Tennessee, F you, Tennessee, blah, blah, blah. So maybe some bad blood from some of the Tennessee fans and players towards Ted Karras if they saw that video. So if you're traveling to Tennessee, make sure you watch out, be safe out there. You know, there's a lot of fights going on. Like I said, I didn't see any fights where we were, but we were probably too high up for anybody to get in, into any kind of fights. 
probably, I would imagine the fights in the stands are more in the lower bowl area, especially where those cocktails are being sold. All the alcoholic, like high proof alcohol probably is where the fights are. <laughs> and I expect the Titans to come out ready to fight. Like I said, they went on an eight game losing streak after they lost to the Bengals. So their season kind of went into a tailspin last year after that Bengals game. So they're looking for a little bit of revenge in a lot of ways. Statistically, these two offenses are not having very much success, either one of them. The Bengals are ranked number 30. The Titans are ranked number 31 out of 32 teams in terms of total yards per game. The Bengals are averaging 244. Titans are averaging 240. And the Bengals had a better game against the Rams. That, that you know, bumped their average up a little bit. So hopefully the Bengals will continue to improve in the offensive category. The Bengals are a little have had a little bit more success than the Titans passing the ball. Just That's probably more based on volume because Joe Burrow threw the ball 49 times last week. So when you're throwing the ball that many times, you're going to have more yards just naturally. But the Titans on the flip side are a little bit more committed to running the ball, let's say. So they have a little bit more yards rushing than the Bengals do, but neither team is great in either area, rushing or passing. So that's why they're both at the bottom of the league in terms of yards. They're both in the bottom of the league in scoring offense. They're averaging about 15 points per game. And the Bengals' defense is near the bottom of the league defending against the run because they played the Browns and the Ravens, two prolific running teams going to be interesting to see if the Bengals are able to keep Derrick Henry under control like they did last year. The Titans defense is more of towards the middle of the league in yards, a little bit better than the Bengals, and the Titans defense have given up a lot of passing yards. They're in the bottom five in terms of passing yards allowed, but they're in the top five or one of the top best, five best, in terms of defending against the run. So that could actually play into the Bengals' game plans because the Bengals are more of a passing offense anyway. They haven't really gotten too much going. Joe Mixon got you know 65 yards on the ground last week, which was better than he probably had been you know lately. But the Bengals haven't really gotten a lot of success out of the run. They're more of a pass anyway. So that may make for a good matchup for the Bengals' offense against perhaps a suspect Titans passing defense. In terms of injuries for this game, the Bengals have Irv Smith Jr., their tight end, still out with a hamstring issue, so we're probably going to see Tanner Hudson, number 87, again. Joe Burrow does not have any injury designation. He's good to go this week, so he practiced fully, and hopefully that's a good sign that hopefully he'll be on the same page with his receivers and the offense won't have false start penalties and look as sloppy as they did last week. So hopefully that practice time will help everyone, including Joe Burrow. Also, Charlie Jones, the rookie punt returner wide receiver, is going to the IR. He's out with a thumb injury. So I didn't see anything happen to him in the game. They didn't say anything after the game. But then all of a sudden, sometime during the week, Charlie Jones wasn't practicing with a thumb. And then he's going to the IR, which means he's going to be out for at least the next four games. So they're going to have to find a new punt returner. In the meantime, that may mean that Trenton Irwin, number 16, the wide receiver, who's been on the team, he's from Stanford, so he'll probably be active and return punts and maybe get a little bit more snaps when the offense is on the field. But relatively speaking, the Bengals are got off pretty easy on the injury side. The Titans have a couple of significant injuries. Traylon Burks, their starting wide receiver, first-round pick, from a couple years ago, he's going to be out with a knee injury. And then Pete Skoronsky, their first round left guard, is going to be out. He had a ruptured appendix, so he's been out for a couple weeks now. That's something Joe Burrow had to deal with, so we know that's something not to mess around with. And then they also have Luke Gifford, linebacker, and Elijah Molden, cornerback. A couple of backup players, they're going to be out also, so the Titans may be down on a little bit of depth. So not quite as bad as the Ravens had injury-wise, but you would say just from an injury perspective, Bengals should have the advantage, but that doesn't really mean anything because the Ravens beat the Bengals. 
a little bit of a scouting report about the Titans. We know Mike Vrabel, the head coach, he's a longtime player in the NFL, hard-nosed, tough guy, Patriot way, and he's brought that to Tennessee. And he had a lot of success, not so much recently, so he's trying to get his squad back on track. They got Jeffrey Simmons, number 98, is their big defensive tackle. He, You can tell who he is because he always has a red arm sleeve on his right arm. So his he's probably the only one on the team that does this, probably just to kind of stand out a little bit more. But he usually has red cleats and a red sleeve on his right arm. And I think he wears red gloves too. So that's how you can tell who Jeffrey Simmons is. Then Kevin Bayard, their safety, he led the league in interceptions a couple years ago. And so if Joe Burrow's not careful, he could pick off some of his passes. He's number 31 on the defense. Their leading tackler is their linebacker, Aziz al Shair, And they also have on the defensive line, Harold Landry, Danico Autry, Tair Tart, some pass rushers who are familiar with sacking Joe Burrow in recent years. Titans offense, they still have Ryan Tannehill eating up a huge salary and never really living up to it. It was always like a weird thing of seeing Ryan Tannehill making this huge amount of money and the Titans are always kept him around, kept him around. But it was always like, well, I guess we can't do any better than Ryan Tanhill, so I guess we have to keep him. But you always felt like they wanted to get rid of him and move on if they could find anybody better. But they couldn't draft anybody. They drafted Malik Willis and Will Levis. So they've got backups if Ryan Tanhill should go down. But so far, none of them have been able to supplant him. But they still have Derrick Henry. They have DeAndre Hopkins, who is new this year. He was released by the Cardinals, signed with the Titans. Traylon Burks is going to be out, so they're going to have to rely more on Nick Westbrook-Akine and Chris Moore, who had a nice catch against the Browns last week. Special teams-wise, they've got a good, strong punter, Ryan Stonehouse. He's averaging 52 yards per punt, so one of the longest punting punters in the league. They also replaced... Randy Bullock, Fat Randy, with Nick Folk, the longtime kicker. He's, I guess, most recently with the Patriots, but Nick Folk is kicking for the Titans now. Before we get out of here, let's go through our week four picks. Last week in week three, I was 10 out of 16. Got 10 out of 16 right, so getting a little bit better every week. First, I was 8 out of 16, then 9, then 10 last week, so... Let's see if, as the season goes on, if I'm able to keep up the consistency. Now, the Thursday game has already happened. Lions beat the Packers, so I I won't be able to pick that one. But in terms of the other games, let's go through London game, Falcons at the Jaguars. I'm going to take the Jaguars just because I think they need to get on track. They need a win. Even though the Falcons do have a lot of offensive weapons, Jaguars are at home in London, so I'm going to take the Jags. Dolphins at Bills. Dolphins just put up 70 points against the Broncos last week. So even though the Bills are at home and they are a strong opponent, I can't bet against a team that is getting Jalen Waddle back. So they scored 70 points without one of their best weapons. So now they're going to have more weapons. I can't bet against the Dolphins. Now, Broncos, Bears, these teams are both 0-3. Both probably looking worse than either team in the league hmm I'm gonna go Bears in this one let's you know screw it let's go Bears uh Broncos just got 70 on them last week I'm not feeling good about their chances against anybody hmm Ravens Browns Ravens at the Cleveland Browns Ravens look pretty good but Browns have looked better Deshaun Watson is supposed to play he was questionable with a shoulder injury but it looks like he's gonna play so I'm going to take the Browns in that one, as much as I don't like either of those teams. Bengals at Titans. I'm taking the Bengals, of course. Rams at Colts. Anthony Richardson is supposed to play, and Matthew Stafford is probably still licking his wounds from that game against the Bengals. So I'm going to take the Colts in that one. Buccaneers at Saints. Um, Derek Carr is going to be out, I believe, so I'm going to take Baker Mayfield and the Bucks in that one. Commanders at the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm taking the Eagles. Vikings at Panthers. Both of these teams are 0-3, but I think the Vikings are a better 0-3 
than the Panthers. So I'm going to go with Minnesota in that one. Panthers are looking pretty terrible this year, although they are going to have Bryce Young back. So he was out just one game. He's coming back. Red Rifle has to go back to the bench, unfortunately. Steelers at the Texans. Texans got their first win with C.J. Stroud, and he's looking like a good young rookie. But I'm still going to go with Steelers. T.J. Watt is probably going to have something to say to C.J. Stroud. Raiders at Chargers. I think Jimmy Garoppolo might still be in concussion protocol, so it's going to be close if he's going to be able to play. I'm going to take the Chargers in that one. Patriots at Cowboys. Ezekiel Elliott returns to AT&T Stadium. I'm going to take the Cowboys in that one, even though they lost to the Cardinals last week without Trevon Diggs. I still think they have enough talent to beat the Patriots. The Patriots barely beat the Jets last week, so if that tells you anything about the Patriots. Cardinals at 49ers. Even though the Cardinals won with Josh Jobs, they're looking frisky. Good for them. 49ers are going to take care of business at home against the Cardinals. No problem. 49ers in that one. Sunday Night Football, we got Chiefs at the Jets at MetLife Stadium. I feel sorry for Jets fans who have to watch their team in prime time play the Chiefs with Zach Wilson as their quarterback. Hopefully the Jets can just put some points on the board and make it look like somewhat competitive. So come on, Jets, get some points, but Chiefs are going to win that one. And then Monday Night Football, Seahawks at the Giants. Uh, I'm going to say Seahawks in that one. Giants have not lived up to my expectations so far this year. They've looked a little bit rough, a little shaky, so I'm going to take the Seahawks in that one, but we'll see. But this is a short week, so a little bit of a shorter episode. I'll be right back with episode 13 for the week four game recap after they play this game to break down all the interesting things that happened before, during, and after the game. So again, subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you can download these episodes and listen to them as soon as they come out. So until next time, I'll leave you with a who day and stay hungry for more Bengal Bites. Mm-hmm.